These combined, if we switch maps, we can show you the larger map, are going to give China roughly 230 new missile silos. Training area, missile silos, missile silos, and then this is a laser base. This is in the far northwest part of China, the most rural and barren part of that. This is certainly significant, if not the greatest expansion of China's nuclear arsenal. Joining us now to discuss what this means, Dr. Rebecca Grant, China expert and strategic arms analyst as well. Doctor, uh, is this as scary as it sounds? Yes, this is scary. What we see here is China is starting to build up a bigger nuclear deterrent. The Pentagon warned us back in September that China planned to double the size of its nuclear arsenal. And now we see where some of those new warheads will go in that second missile field. And also, we've got to talk about that laser base and what it means. Okay, what's it mean? Right. So very interesting that this is on the imagery. We have known for a little while that China has created a ground-based high-energy laser. Its purpose is to knock out and disable U.S. and other satellites on orbit. And the Defense Intelligence Agency and others had predicted this would come online. This is a very clear picture that that capability, we have to assume it's operational. And that means that China has the ability to threaten all our space constellations, communications, GPS, and everything that goes with that. It's a very scary capability unveiled in that photo also there, Leland. We're going to put some of the photos uh, back up. Any idea why now that China is increasing their capabilities so much? I know why now, and our Deputy Secretary of State is over in the region, and China just said to her, you're creating an imaginary enemy. Well, heck, that is wrong. What we see is China being much more assertive, two reasons. They want to hold off Russia and India. They want to be that big dog in the military power. Another reason, Leland, it's internal. Don't forget China's rulers are the grandsons of Mao's revolutionary army, and the politics within their military are very important. So part of this hmm. is about the power base in China's military itself internally. I know it's difficult sometimes to tell from satellite imagery. It's much more of an art than a science to interpret these things. As we look, we see the roads there on some of these images. Uh, any idea when these silos would actually become operational? How much time does the Pentagon have to plan for this laser being operational? You know, I think we have to assume, uh, and it's hard to tell, as you say, we have to assume that the laser is operational and what does that mean for deterrence in space. Back to the missile silos, it's very interesting. They're not really that hard to see, are they? This is gorgeous imagery, but you know the U.S. military and Space Command have better pictures than this. Strategic Command will have known for quite a while this is coming. They'll have made their own estimate as to how soon this comes online. Hmm. Uh, we won't know that, but clearly China wanted us to see this, and now is the time to realize we've got to deter China, and we've got to understand that in Washington. There is a bipartisan consensus yeah, about deterring China. It's got to get stronger. Fi finally, there's some bipartisanship on this, especially when it comes to uh, Hong Kong a little bit in Taiwan as well, is sort of that it's bad. Now what to do about it? You mentioned that meeting with Wendy Sherman, who's over uh, mm -hmm. in China, and the Chinese had a, shall we say, an impressive list of grievances against the United <laughs> States. And, and they went on to say that we had hurt their feelings and on and on. Are we in a new Cold War? Yeah, I think we are. And yes. it's, they have a chip on their shoulder from imperialism and all this. It's really not our fault. They've done terrible things. They've stolen our intellectual property. They spread COVID around the world. Yeah, I think we are pretty close to a new Cold War, and we need to be strong with our allies to face them down. I, I can't help but ask a little bit of a political question. We know that mm -hmm. President Biden is facing a lot of pressure from the political left to use the political clout with China, not over arms, not over Hong Kong, not over Taiwan, not over intellectual property, but they believe that climate change is all that matters. How confident are you that the U.S. is going to use its political power against China on the issues that you just outlined? China is the world's biggest polluter. 
And here they want to build nuclear weapons, not do arms control. So can you really trust them on climate? I'm very worried about climate and China when we have these huge pressing issues of their building nuclear arsenal and everything else. It really worries me, Leland. Is it worth sitting down and talking to them? Because I, I, a number of people in your field, uh, more on the intelligence side, used to say to me, you know the Chinese are lying when their lips are moving, which sort of is what <laughs> happened out of the meeting a couple of days ago, but it doesn't seem as though you can even have an understanding with them and then move forward. It's always good to talk, but what's much more important now is the talks we have with our allies. Japan has come out with some very strong statements about uh, the security of Taiwan, et cetera. So it's much more important now, I think, that we talk with Japan, Australia, Taiwan, put some forces there, perhaps, and really sure of our partnerships in the Pacific and around the world. And then we have got to come to grips with the fact that we must decouple more of our economy and trade from China. We just can't take the risk. And that new nuclear base and that laser satellite killer weapon really should make us stop and think. The other thing that would make you stop and think about all these new missiles now on the ground is, uh, can we shoot one of them down if they come at us? <laughs> Yes, and we do have a missile deterrent, a missile defense system on the West Coast, uh, based in Alaska and a little bit there in California. But it's designed against what they call a rogue threat, more of a North Korea or an Iran, possibly hmm. if they develop that, just a small number of missiles. We really rely, as we have for decades, on nuclear deterrence, that is having an arsenal big enough so that no one wants to try it in nuclear war. And hmm. it's very disturbing to see China, who has always had a very small nuclear force, wanting to build that up. There's no good reason to do that. There's no reason in the world for them to build those nuclear weapons. It is very, very disturbing. Well, we're glad you were here. I wish I could say I felt better after our conversation, perhaps more <laughs> informed, uh, but not better. Thank you very much, doctor. It's good to see you as always. Thank you. Thanks. Coming up, you are vaccinated, but should you still mask up? It's a question we are still asking 16 months into the pandemic.